So lift up your hands unto the Lord and just tell the Lord, ask the Lord, say, Father, speak to me today. Father, speak to me today. Father, speak to me today. Open up your word unto me today. Talk to him. Say, open up your word unto me today. Let your word locate me. Give me a word for me that will take me to my next level. That will catapult me, change my story. I don't want to leave here the same way that I came. I came into the presence of the king. I cannot go back the same way that I came. Something must change in my life today. Something must drop in my life today. Father, send your word that will locate me, Lord. Open my eyes to receive that word so that it will change my story. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word because it is forever settled in heaven. Let it be settled today in our lives. Let your word be settled today in our lives. Let it be settled today in our circumstances. Let it be settled today in our health. Let it be settled today in our situation. Let the spirit of your word enter us as it is released. As it is released and empower us and empower us to do what we ought to do in Jesus' name. And to become all that God has called us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I hear a better amen? amen? So we'll be studying about obedience, the force of obedience. For well, like what, several weeks now? Amen? Amen? By now you should be, you should be loaded with a lot of obedience. <laughs> amen? And our primary text has been Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1, and it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. He will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Obedience is the gateway to your being set on high above all the nations of the earth. How many of you want to be on high? If you, are not, if you don't want to be on high, you're in the wrong church. You need to go somewhere else. We're, here we are raising kings and we're raising leaders. Amen? We're raising solutions. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? So obedience is the most powerful force. Amen? for your promotion, for your elevation, amen, for you fulfilling your destiny. Obedience is the most powerful force for your enthronement. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen to that? And we have gotten that. We've learned a lot about that. Last week we talked about, we talked about prophetic and scriptural instructions, amen, amen, and what the difference are, Amen how we can recognize them, amen? So we could be obedient to them. So can I hear an amen to that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And today I want to talk about factors that empower obedience in our lives. There are certain understandings that when you get to understand them, it will make you to be more obedient. You know, our nature is naturally rebellious. Amen? Amen? Our nature is naturally rebellious, and a lot of the time we call that freedom to do what I like. But what you like will lead you to destruction. Can I hear an amen to that? Because there is a way that cement right unto a man, but it leads to destruction. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we want to talk about factors that empower obedience in our lives. But we want to talk about that. I just wanted to make one point that came to me over the weekend. Amen. As I was, I, was, I was meditating over the weekend, you know, is that obedience to divine instructions allows us to release our faith despite our feelings. Obedience to divine instructions allows us to release our faith despite our feelings. I think the fact that God gives us instructions to obey is an act of love or mercy. Can I hear an amen to that? Take, for instance, the story of Naaman. How I many of you know that story, right? In, in 2 Kings chapter 5, 
Verse 1, Naaman had leprosy, went to Elisha for Elisha to heal him. Amen? And Elisha didn't even come out to see him. Elisha sent somebody to tell him, as Elisha didn't open the door. <laughs> Amen? He came from a far country, travel, a mighty general. Elisha didn't even come out to see him. Elisha sent somebody to go tell him to go to the river Jordan and jump in there seven times, and he will be healed. The Bible says that he was wrought. He was angry. He was enraged. You know, he said, who does this guy think he is? If I wanted to jump into a river, we have better rivers in Damascus. I came all the way. He wouldn't even come out to see me, to say, how are you? Amen? To recognize my status, who I am. He sent somebody to tell me to go jump into a dirty river. He turned back furiously, said, I'm going home. How many of you will agree that Naaman was not in faith at that time? Amen. Amen. He was not feeling God at all. And he was not in faith. Amen. Then one of his servants came to him and said, ah, if the man of God has told you to do something big, amen, cut off your left ear, bring your first daughter, all kinds of things, wouldn't you have done it? I believe that I went to do it in protest. Just let me fulfill all righteousness. Let it not be that I came here and he said and I did not do. Amen. God understood that Naaman may not be able to have unwavering faith. So you know what he did? He gave him an instruction. The obedience of that instruction released his faith. I believe that was an act of mercy. It's an act of love so that Naaman can get his miracle without praying and fasting and studying the Bible to build up his faith. Can I hear an amen to that? And so that God deals with us in that way, he gives us a simple instruction. Very, very simple instruction to release our faith so that we will not miss our miracle. Can I hear an amen to that? So factors that enhance obedience. That is, if you have an understanding of these factors, amen, it will be easy for you to walk in obedience to scriptural and prophetic instructions. One of the factors, number one, is understanding the sovereignty of God. Understanding the sovereignty of God. What does the word sovereignty mean? It means God does everything on purpose. It means God has unlimited power and authority. That's what it means. It means God has total and absolute control. Amen. Amen. It means God is infinitely elevated above the highest creature. He is the most high God, Lord of heaven and earth. He is subject to no one. He's influenced by no one. He's independent and free in his own being. That's what it means. Amen. Psalm 99 verse 1 says, The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He said, The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He seated between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. Psalm 102 verse 19 says, the Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruled over all. There is no exception. Over all. Amen. 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 This is the one that I really like. Amen. Psalm 115 verse 3. He says, our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. So really it means... That God does as he pleases. Always as he pleases. And forever as he pleases. Amen. Amen. No one can hinder him. No one can compel him. And no one can stop him. 
Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? So let me ask you a question. If you're relating with such a powerful, infinite being that does as he pleases, he does only what he wants to do. Wouldn't you want to find out what pleases him and do that so that you'll be in his good books? Exactly. Amen? Amen? He does what he likes. Amen? Amen? I was fighting God for a long time till I realized that he does what he likes. Praise the Lord. And he does not owe me an explanation. He doesn't owe you an explanation. And he showed it to you because when he created you and gave you your parents, he didn't consult you. He chose your nation, chose your tribe, chose your parents, chose everything. He didn't consult you. Because he does what he pleases. Amen. So the formula for success is to find out what pleases him and do that. That was what Jesus did in John chapter 8, verse 29. Jesus said, he said, and he that sent me is with him, me. The father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. That's the secret to the success of Jesus. He said, I do always those things that please him. He said, I don't do anything unless my father tells me to do it. I don't do anything without his permission. I do always those things that please him. That's the formula for success. Gentlemen, brethren, wake up. Amen. Praise the Lord. You want your struggles to end? Amen. You want God to set you high above the nations of the earth? You want God to make you the head and not the tail? You want to be captain of your industry? Look, let me tell you, God takes the base things of the world to confound the wise. He lifts up people overnight. He takes nobodies and turns them into somebodies, into people that everybody will depend on. There are so many stories in the Bible. Amen. And there are so many stories in history. He took 12 disciples, amen, and made history with them. 2,000 years, we are talking about them, we are calling our children their names, we are writing books about them, we are going to school to study about them. They are the most famous people I know of. Amen. Amen. He does what he pleases. So when I realized that, I realized that there is no use in arguing with him. Praise the Lord. He told Job, when Job began to question him, he said, he said Job, look, 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 look. Who are you to even question me? I don't owe you an explanation. If I choose to explain to you, it's out of love. It's not a right. It's a privilege. Wake up. Amen. Understand that he does what he pleases. Amen. Praise the Lord. And none of us can question his intelligence because we don't even have the capacity to. We can't even understand. He has been from everlasting. Amen. You can't see beyond the firmament. He knows all the stars by name and number. The scientists are still trying to discover galaxies. He knows all of them by name and number. There are perhaps more stars than there are human beings. And the Bible says you uphold all things by the word of his power. You look into space, you see how those things are flying and they've not crashed yet. None has crashed to the earth. You uphold all things by the word of his power. He's sovereign. So you can fool yourself, amen, and be struggling to do it your own way. Amen. And keep on struggling for the rest of your life. And pass the struggle over to your children. Or 
you could sit down and say, Lord, what will make you happy? I'm going to do that. That will make you happy. And then he will turn your life around. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? Amen? Because true freedom, amen, that I told you before, there cannot be true freedom without laws. Amen? Because my freedom ends where yours begin. So there must be boundaries. So to live a life without boundaries is not freedom. It's destruction. And God's instructions is to set boundaries for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's to set boundaries. But that's what he told Adam. He said you can eat of every tree. You can eat of everything in this garden. Nothing is off limits to you. But this one tree here, don't touch it. Boundaries. But that's the tree that he went to touch. Do you know that if he has been eating all the trees and say, okay, I'll make that tree the last, he probably wouldn't have finished all the trees in the garden by, for eternity. But is it that is the Adamic rebellious nature in every one of us? And so we must fight it because it's going to destroy our destinies. We don't like to be obedient to instructions, we don't like to follow right. He said, no, but what of how I feel? What does what you feel got to do with destiny? Your feelings change a thousand times a day. The, change, the way you're feeling right now, in the next one hour, you may not be feeling that way. Tomorrow, you may not be feeling that way. What has feeling got to do with eternity? Got to do with your destiny. Can I hear an amen to that? Somebody shout Hallelujah. But I see somebody getting it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Understand that he is sovereign. Can I hear an amen to that? Oh, my time is running. Amen. Number two factor that will enhance obedience is the fear of the Lord. Say with me, say the fear of the Lord. Now, this is not the dread of the Lord. This is the worshipful, reverential fear of the Lord. It's not the dreadful fear, but the worshipful fear of the Lord, a sense of awe and respect. A sense of awe and respect. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? Amen? Because the, the, the fear of the Lord is to extremely value his word and his presence. To extremely value his word and his presence. To understand that you're not dealing with man, you're dealing with God, the almighty God that was not elected, not nominated, you cannot vote him out of power, he's all powerful. Amen. Reverential fear of God. Amen. To fear the Lord is to have this continuous awareness that you are in his presence. Amen. Amen. You are in the presence of a holy, a just, and almighty God. So every thought, every motive, amen, every action is not hidden from him. Amen. To understand that. The Bible says in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Amen. Amen. The fear of the Lord is to understand that. You are always, it doesn't matter where you are, you're always in his presence. And in the presence of this holy, this just, this almighty God who has standards. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? And so everything that we do is open unto him. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. The fear of the Lord is one of the most powerful things that we need to have. If you don't have that, cultivate it. Ask for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It will make you obedient. Amen. And it's that same fear that we need to put in our children. We need to put and train them in the fear. The Bible says raise them up in the fear of the Lord. 
so that they understand that they are children of purpose, they cannot behave anyhow. And that while our God is a loving and merciful God, is also a consuming fire. You know what the Bible says? It says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. It's a fearful thing. There's a man that fell briefly into the hands of God. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. God raised him up. He became the king of the most powerful nation on earth. And one day he walked out and he said, isn't this my kingdom that I built my own hands? I was taking God's glory. God said, what? He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn you into an animal. Amen. I, you see, I'm not just going to kill you because you won't understand. If I just kill you, you won't understand. But I'm going to turn into an animal. I'm going to take you off your throne. I'm going to put you in the forest. Amen. I'll change, I'll change your metabolism to digest all those animal foods and eat all those things. And I'll do it in such a way that even when you eat all those things that should naturally kill you, they won't kill you. You're going to be in the forest for seven years with the lions and with the cobras and all that and live like an animal for seven years. Amen. And I will not permit them to kill you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Because I just want to show you who I really am. I will not permit them to kill you. Amen. I'll tell you that you're going to eat animals, you're going to eat dung, you're going to eat all kinds of things that will naturally have poisoned you and killed you, but they will not kill you. Because I am God, I do what I like. And I'll keep you there for seven years. I know what I'm going to do also. Within that seven years, I'm not even going to allow anybody to take your position. I'll keep your throne for you. And then after seven years, I'll restore you back to becoming a human being. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. And when he became a human being, do you know that Nebuchadnezzar wrote one chapter of the Bible? He said, now I know. That the God in heaven, he is the Lord. He wrote the whole chapter of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Because God said, I want to show you who I am. Don't let God want to show you who I am. Don't try him. Amen. We live such lackadaisical lives, you know, that we, 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 we forget that God, <laughs> oh my God. The fact that he's merciful, the other aspect of his mercy is judgment. The other, act of his, other side of his mercy is judgment. If you don't know, go ask Ananias and Sapphira. When they came light to the Holy Ghost, instantly. Amen. The fear of the Lord. To understand that if he decides to elevate us into fellowship with him, it is because he's out of his choice and we respect that. And don't take him for granted. Because some of the things that we're doing are not only going to affect us, it's going to affect our generations. Hello, I'm just telling you, this is what the Bible says. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Psalm 25, verse 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Amen. The secret that will make you excel in your job, in your business, is with those that fear him. He knows the secrets. He knows how to turn your bosses around. He knows how to make you the captain of your company. Like that. Of your business. Amen. Psalm 33 verse 18 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon them that hope in his mercy. When you fear him, his eye is on you. No weapon. Amen. Psalm 34 verse 7. He said, the angel of the Lord encamped and comes around about them that fear him and delivers them. He said, the angel comes around those that fear him and delivers them. Amen. No, no, nothing can come your way. Nothing can come near you when you fear the Lord. Psalm 128 verse 1 says, blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. When you fear the Lord, you are blessed. Psalm 1 verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, sorry, Proverbs 1 verse 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despite wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 8, 13 says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. 
Proverbs 9, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the bringing of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 10, 27 says, The fear of the Lord prolongs days. Prolongs days. You want to live long? The fear of the Lord. I made up my mind that I want to live to 120. I just made that decision a few years ago. When I was young, I just wanted to get to 50. I passed 50, so I said, okay, now I want to go to 120. Amen? Somebody shout hallelujah. And I'll still be this truck and I'll still be preaching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 14, verse 28, 26. The fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Proverbs 14, verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Fear of the Lord gives life. Proverbs 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is poised. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. The fear of the Lord makes us depart from evil, makes us not want to do wrong, even when nobody's watching. Amen? When Potiphar's wife said, told Joseph, said, nobody's here. Joseph said, uh, how can I do this to the God of... There's somebody watching. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 19, 20, the fear of the Lord tends, tends to life. He that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Proverbs 22, verse 4, says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. Want to be wealthy? The fear of the Lord is key. Reverential, respectful, fear of the Lord. Can I add amen to that? Amen. So it manifests in your relationship with him, in the way you talk to him, in the way you take care of him. The Bible says, you know what God said? He said, I dwell in a high and lofty place with him that is of a broken and a contrite spirit and that trembles at my word, trembles at my word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Factor that enhances obedience number three, the knowledge of his word. Everybody say with me, say the knowledge of his word. Amen. And I'm just, I'm just going to say one thing concerning that. If you want to obey somebody, you need to find out what he wants you to obey. If you do not invest time and effort in knowing the word of God, then you are not, you are not interested in obeying him. By the way you spend time and effort to know what he says, what he wants you to obey, then that's evidence that you're interested in obeying him. Because if you're really interested in obeying him, you will spend the time to search his word. You spend the time to come to church. I will tell you what his word is. Can I hear an amen to that? So knowledge of the word of God is one of the factors that enhance obedience. And then number four, Trust in God. Everybody say trust in God. Everybody say trust in God. Number one, trust that his instructions are not grievous. The Bible says that his commandments are not uh, grievous. Amen. Because some people are afraid that God will tell them to do something that they cannot do. God will never tell you to do something that you cannot do. If he tells you to do something, he will empower you to do it. He says his instructions are not grievous. You know what Jesus said? He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you Rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. His commandments are not grievous. The Bible says his commandments are not grievous. Amen. We must trust him that the instructions are for our own good. God doesn't get anything out of you obeying him. He doesn't need anything. Hello? He told them in Haggai, he said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Because you don't even have the capacity to satisfy my hunger. God doesn't get anything from you obeying him. So if you're disobeying him, you're not making him, you're not doing him. You're doing yourself. His instructions are for your own good. Can I hear an amen to that? So we must trust that his instructions are for our own good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Trust in God. The seal of that is that trust also that the instructions will lead you to a more glorious destiny than you can imagine. He says, I have a plan for you to bring you to an expected end. I have a plan for you to bring you to a glorious end. I have a plan. And I know how to get you there. I have set your destiny here. And I know how to get you there. If you follow me, I will take you there. You need to trust him. Amen. Now when God tells you to do something, amen, is to bring you to a glorious destiny. He told Moses, say, throw the rod. Moses threw the rod, it became a snake. Then he, tells, he said, pick the snake by the serpent by the tail. That's one of the craziest instructions ever. You don't pick a, a serpent by the tail. It will sting you. But Moses knew that that is for his own. If God said, pick the serpent by the tail, you pick it by the tail. Amen. Because God knew what he was doing. You may not know what you're doing, but he knows what he is doing. Praise the Lord. He is in control. He's sovereign. Somebody say amen to that. And then trust that if he said it, then trust that if he said it, if he said that you should do it, then you already have the power to do it. The Bible says that there is no temptation. There is no temptation. Amen. In a, he said, but that is common unto man. Amen. And that with the temptation, God will empower you. God will never tempt you more than what you can do. What he has empowered you to do. He won't ask you to do what he has not empowered you to do. So if God to say do it, he has given you the power to do it. Can I hear an amen to that? And then the final thing that enhances obedience is a heart for God. Everybody say heart for God. Amen. Everybody say heart for God. Everybody say heart for God. When you have a heart for God, you'll be delightsomely obedient. Stand on your feet. Have you been blessed today? Amen. Stand on your feet. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And ask the Lord. Say, Lord, Lord, help me to understand your sovereignty. Open my eyes to see. Lord, help me to understand. Open my sovereignty. eyes to see. Open my eyes to see and to understand. And do me with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Do me with the spirit of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And do me, O God, with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Let me, O God, understand. So that I will be delightfully obedient unto you. Easily obey you. Ask him. Hallelujah. And do me with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of obedience, O God. Let it possess. Empower me, Lord, from today. I will search your word to know. I will search your word to know what I need to obey. Completely. And I trust you. I will trust you. No matter what it looks like, I will trust you. Yes, Lord. You are my God. Empower me, Lord, to be obedient. Me to trust you and help me lord my interest, my i want to obey you lord help me lord help me lord break help every me. rebellious bone in my break body in my life bone in my body and remove every life. seed of disobedience remove every seed of disobedience in my life this having my way attitude to obey you god i have increased oh god help me lord in jesus name we pray amen can i hear a better amen amen can I hear believe in amen? Amen. Now, if you're here and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, then you've not even started. So there's an opportunity here. You can get born again, give your life to Jesus Christ, get your sins forgiven, so that you can come into the covenant of the New Testament. Amen. 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 And then your obedience will begin to count. Because your obedience doesn't count until you're born again. Amen. amen. So if you're here and you'd like me to pray with you, just lift your hands up where you are. Lift your hands up where you are. Lift your hands up where you are. If you're here and you'd like me to pray with you, somebody say amen to that. Amen. So lift up your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord.
Father, baptize us with the spirit of obedience. Amen. With the spirit of obedience. Amen. So that we can obey our way yes. into our change of levels. Amen. So that we can obey our way yes. into our destiny. Amen. So that we can obey our way. Yes, Lord. Into our victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And every disobedience concerning us, we command it judged. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every blessing that belongs to us, that has been delayed or denied or hindered by our disobedience, today Amen. we command them restored. We command them release. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name we pray.